Welcome and good evening. Thank you for joining us. We have members in our community today from around the world. Thank you for sharing in the chat uh, where you're from. And welcome to our monthly speaker series event hosted by Sadhguru Center for a Conscious Planet. We are a multidisciplinary research center and education initiative at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. And our work is to enhance human well being through exploring consciousness, cognition, and compassion. And today we have a special guest speaker joining us to talk about uh, an important topic of traditional complementary and integrative medicine in Latin America. And joining us today is Dr. Claudia Matos Miranda. She is a integrative medical doctor and human geneticist. She is graduated from the Universidad Peruana Cayetano Heredia in Peru and McGill University in Canada, as well as uh, the Isha Yoga Center in India. So she's also a trained yoga instructor with over 1,750 hours of training. She has had multiple fellowships around the world at renowned universities such as Le Centre Hospitalier at Université de Liège and the Oxford University in Churchill, uh, as well as, sorry, the Churchill Hospital, the Johns Hos Hopkins Hospital and the Tufts Medical Center. She integrates the practice of conventional medicine with the approach of whole person care and develops educational programs and research projects in traditional complementary and integrative medicine. Currently, she is the manager of complementary medicine of the Social Security of Peru, S. Salud, which is a PAHO and WHO collaborating center in traditional and complementary medicine for the Americas. And we are very grateful to you, uh, Dr. Matos Miranda, to, for joining us and taking our time to connect with us today to share a little bit about your experience with these different layers of medicine, medicinal and health systems in Peru, as well as talking a little bit about how intercultural medicine is supporting uh, people's health during this pandemic in Peru. And in addition, sharing a little bit about the different wellness and mental health programs, as well as your experience with research on the same. So we're happy to have you. Please go ahead and share your screen with us and turn on your video and uh, you have the floor. Please take it away. I'm going to proceed with my presentation. As I was mentioning, uh, in Esalud, where is where I currently work, it is the Social Security of Peru, which is a government-related entity. It provides healthcare coverage for more than 11 million policyholders and their beneficiaries. And the complementary um, medicine consultation, for example, in the case of this year, from January of, uh, to August, has been um, a bit more than 120,000 uh, you know, consultations. So even though we were uh, having uh, the pandemic and we did stop from uh, February to June, we were able to restart our services and offer it to our policyholders. At the same time as um, the direction of complementary medicine, we are the uh, WHO Collaborating Center in Traditional and Complementary Medicine for the Americans, for the Americas. And our mission is to uh, develop policies and apply action plans that reinforce the role of traditional complementary and integrative medicine through the fulfillment of research, action, and communication objectives. Uh, to have a little review of what complementary medicine is, uh, it is a group of diagnostic and therapeutic disciplines based on traditional medicine that are used together with conventional medicine. It includes the use of nutrition, naturopathy, acupuncture, massage, mind-body therapies like Tai Chi, yoga, etc. And in our centers, we do have um, a, a kind of team, actually. We have 29 centers and 55 units 
of complementary medicine um, uh, in the country. This is uh, throughout the country. And each one of our teams, especially in the centers, it involves having a medical doctor, a nurse, a physical therapist, a chemist, because we do have natural pharmacists, uh, and psychologists. But as I was saying at the beginning, during the pandemic, we had to stop our services. Actually, we put it on hold for two reasons. The first one is that the majority of our patients are um, so far have been, uh, you know, older people, like um, people that is older than 65 even. So we were actually very careful with uh, not offering this to this group of people that would put them in risk uh, when they come to our centers. The other thing is that we had a need in the institution for help from all the different professionals that um, were integrating the institution. So we decided as complementary medicine teams, we decided to be part of taking care of the attention for the first wave of COVID-19. We uh, were part of the first line in each and every one of the different networks that we had in the country. And that really helped us a lot because there is always this belief that medical doctors or any kind of uh, health professionals that are um, dedicating themselves to do complementary medicine, they may not be too, um, how can I say, too fit to be working in different other areas. But we did prove that we were not only uh, ready to join um, you know, the force of taking care of this pandemic, but we, are, we were also to integrate with other professionals to be able to offer the best to our patients. It was really positive because in that situation, um, people was able to uh, communicate between each other and see the abilities and capacities that we had one of the other things that happened is that we were able to offer um, a whole person medicine approach to our own patients for COVID, of COVID-19 and also to our own colleagues. Many of our colleagues were actually suffering from high levels of anxiety. And it was uh, the medical doctors, the nurses, all the health professionals from complementary medicine who offered different kinds of services to the uh, professionals that were taking care of the pandemic. Many of them uh, were able to uh, follow up certain uh, practices that we used to offer in our centers, but now it was offered to the health professionals. It was really, really good, especially for us to be working as a team. One of the things that we also decided to do because we were not able to uh, open our centers, we had to close them. Um, and I also was forgetting about the third reason. It's like, we didn't want to agglomerate people. And um, we used to have most of our practices and most of our workshops uh, were group of workshops. So we decided that it was not the best idea, but still people in the country wanted to get information from what we were, what we were doing and also how we could help them during COVID-19 uh, using our different tools. So we decided to start a series of Facebook Live um, that were running from, from this office. And we were uh, giving different information about, for example, how to deal with anxiety during, um, you know, all this quarantine time, how to give different nat natural solutions to alleviate uh, respiratory symptoms. And we, were, we, we started the talk about uh, self-care and also how to avoid self-medication because one of the things that happened is that people in their house while they were in quarantine, they started to get into self-medication. And one of the things that happens, especially in Peru, is that and in many of the countries in Latin America, is that um, you can pretty much, you can get many, many, many things over the counter here without the need of a prescription. It's some caveat that we have in our uh, legal um, 
uh, in our legal forms. So we were uh, actually giving some advice on how to avoid self-medication and how important it is to just use some of the things that you can have at home in your kitchen to take care of yourself without falling into self-medication. Uh, we also um, took uh, and brought attention to our different colleagues, the importance of epigenetics, how important it is uh, to, to think about this and how much it is important to uh, take care of this issue. Uh, we know that our genes play an important role in health, but also behaviors and environment, nutrition, physical activity, etc they actually cause changes that affect the way your genes work. Uh, I was not intending to give um, you know, an extensive talk on epigenetics, but we did think about it. And we knew that the way how we people, how we were eating, how we were taking care of our uh, sleep patterns, the uh, lack of physical activity could actually have an impact on how uh, people would be um, responding uh, not only to the chronic illness that we were all, already dealing with, but also to with COVID. We knew that the severity of the disease was uh, higher when we had a certain um, lifestyle and certain uh, diseases. So we wanted to take care of this and um, we decided to uh, give it a more a look as integrative medicine, which is actually that is taking care of this. Um, and this is just to review a concept. Integrative medicine is conventional and complementary together, together in a coordinated way. Uh, and also includes um, lifestyle changes, physical rehabil re rehabilitation, psychotherapy, uh, complementary health approaches in various combinations. And as I was saying at the beginning, hope person care. So we decided that we wanted to start including this approach um, when it comes to taking care of our patients and our uh, colleagues, because as I was saying to you, especially during pandemia, we got very close uh, because they really needed some services. So we started to offer different talks and uh, uh, give different information where people can actually, uh, you know, get hand into different practices and things. And for example, this is one of the talks that we ended up giving to the entire institution. Uh, and we gave it uh, not only for the health professionals, but we also gave it to the entire country. And this was a very well heard um, talk. We talked about the importance and benefits of yoga. Um, and it was very popular. People really, really appreciated it. We uh, were able to offer them different uh, links so people can actually have access to very small, um, even sometimes five minute uh, yoga practices that they can actually uh, practice at home uh, without much uh, intervention. Uh, we also decided that it was important to introduce this as um, an approach when it comes to vaccination. We started vaccinating and as you know, we gave um, in many, as, as in many countries, we gave priority to the elderly. And when we started, um, you know, started vaccinating, we decided that we were going to, uh, in the time when they were supposed to be waiting after the vaccine was given, we decided that we were going to give them certain workshops that would help them relax and learn how to uh, um, learn some breathing exercises. Mm, um, many of our nurses from complementary medicine are trained in the um, basic international uh, common, the, the common international yoga protocol. So we decided to offer uh, with all these nurses in all the vaccination centers in Lima, in, this, in the capital of Peru, we decided to offer these to the uh, elderly. 
and they loved it. it. They really appreciated it. Many of them said that it was helping them reduce the anxiety that was created by giving them the vaccine. Um, they also were coming out of a long quarantine time and they really appreciated having something to do at home, not only to move and start moving, but also to learn to breathe better and to um, introduce some of those practices at home. Uh, it was not only the elderly that was learning, it was also the people who were coming with them to the vaccination centers that learned all these practices. It was really a success. And we ended up offering it, as I said, to every single one of the vaccination centers that we had in Lima. At the same time, uh, we decided to give a little bit more information on how uh, we can introduce traditional medicine to our life and complementary medicine as well. Also, we decided to um, uh, talk about different practices as you said, as you saw before, for example, for the 21st of June, we did celebrate International Day of Yoga because it was really a success to talk about yoga the previous time. Uh, we were giving some talks about what is complementary medicine so people can actually know what we do. And uh, we also decided to talk more about traditional medicine and what are the differences between both of them. Um, so this is all what we did until June. Uh, in June, actually, just at the end of June, we were able to start uh, last year, we were able to start uh, our, you know, the activity of our centers. And um, we opened uh, our different centers, most of them actually, uh, very little ones of them haven't been open for different reasons, but the majority of them have been open so we can give a mixture of um, uh, of, of services, we give it we give it uh, we give it presential. We actually meet with them with some of them, and we also give it through uh, Zoom. We use Zoom. We use we use the different uh, technical tools so we can actually offer them not only consultations but also workshops. So we created different workshops. We train and 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 talk to some of the uh, to the majority actually of the nurses and the medical doctors. So they can actually offer what we were offering before um, in our centers, but also uh, virtually. It was working very well. One of the things that we realized is that now we were not only having elderly as the majority of our patients, we were also having young people who were actually coming because they wanted to know what to do when they were sick with COVID-19 and what to do to help themselves um, be healthy enough to not get that sick in case they get infected with COVID. And as this, with all these different consultations that were arriving, we decided to um, make a change in one of our programs. We used to have a program that was taking care of um, decreasing the risk of uh, developing metabolic syndrome. And given the pandemic, people were not really realizing that it was very important to reduce the risk of developing metabolic syndrome. So we decided and we said, okay, let's mix together uh, this program that we used to have with a program that would talk about COVID. Um, and we decided to open a new program that involved our previous program plus education on whatever was happening um, you know, at the level of a public health. In this case, it was going to be COVID. And we called it uh, Mi Salud Mi Vida. And it is a new program that we are launching now. And it involves uh, 12 different sessions uh, where our nurses, who are the leaders of this program, will be talking about the importance of uh, prevention for COVID-19. Uh, and other different infection diseases, uh, we were talking about how to prevent developing chronic illnesses, how to keep our immune system strong um, and working well, uh, how to eat well, healthy, how to sleep healthy, um, how to do some practices of yoga, meditation, tai chi, any kind of um, 
you know, mind body therapy that would actually uh, help them reduce anxiety. We are also talking about death. It's something that nobody was talking about. Uh, people have been suffering a lot in Peru. The pandemic really hit us very bad. And everybody had uh, at least one, per I mean, everybody had a loss, at least one loss. So we wanted to talk about death and how to deal with it. Uh, we're talking about how to take care of our environment, how important it is to take care of our environment. And we're talking about how to keep um, a healthy relationship between different peoples, our family, how to keep a certain balance. Uh, I want to clarify that this Mi Salud Mi Vida, which means my health, my life uh, program, um, I want to clarify that this program is a, it is a preventive and it's, it's a health promotion program that we run outside of the hospital. We actually go to different uh, enterprises, to different companies where we actually offer these sessions free charge because it's something that we offer as a country uh, where these sessions are given by a nurse. And this is given um, in two ways. We use the you know, the internet and we use Zoom and, and Google Meet, etc. And we also are going to spaces to give uh, sessions, but obviously when there is open spaces and in some of the uh, companies, they can offer that to us. We're also linking this program with vaccination. We're talking about vaccination and in case the company needs, we are hoping to be able to also uh, offer vaccination in the company. And that's what we're trying to do now. That's our next project actually with this, with this program. The idea is to have a positive impact for the entire family. It's, um, the idea is to outreach the workers for which we are offering the program. And also we are giving them homework where it involves to, that it involves to um, offer this information education to the rest of the family. Also, um, as I was saying, we open our centers and we're offering this program now. At the same time, we do have a, um, an institute of, um, of uh, traditional medicine. And it is located in Iquitos. If you could see, this is the area where Iquitos is here. Uh, it's in the Yango. Um, we do have this space that is especially dedicated to uh, develop preclinical pre uh, research in medicinal plants. So we are currently working in um, making sure the different laboratories are well equipped. And um, we, we also uh, are developing different uh, studies for the different medicinal plants that we offer in our service. Also, we have a, um, our, our journal for integrative medicine. This is a journal that we expect to uh, keep on running. And we definitely invite uh, different people from all Latin America to, um, to submit any kind of, I mean, any kind of research that you've been having, some, some papers on whatever research you've been doing on traditional complementary and integrative medicine. We do have uh, some intercultural medicine projects. One of the, uh, I would say the most advanced ones that we have, uh, it is a project that we are running with Comando Matico. Comando Matico is a very famous uh, group and association of community uh, from Ucayali. They, during the pandemic, they were amazing. They actually got organized as a community they created like spaces where they could receive patients. They were not able to have easy access to uh, health services. And they decided to create like a protocol using medicinal plants. It's an amazing project. They started working on this and now they are getting ready for the third wave. 
And we are working together. We're trying to put together a project in which we do offer the services that we can give as, um, as a salute. And uh, we will also offer the possibility of doing research uh, on the different um, mixes of medicinal plants that they were actually using to treat the patient. So the idea is to actually offer one person that arrives, uh, offer them both approaches and to complement each other to uh, take care of the people in the community. It is important these kind of projects, not only because we can actually get a very um, valuable information uh, or that we can actually give value to the traditional medicine in Peru or in Latin America in general, but also because we are offering uh, different uh, services to the people in the way they uh, are used to, that we are respecting them as well, that we respect whatever they do. So we are starting these intercultural medicine projects in different parts of the country. This is the one that we are very happy to, uh, to start soon. And uh, we are hoping to start more and be able to show to you more of these projects. As you know, and as I said, we are the, the uh, collaborating center for the WHO on complementary and traditional medicine. And we can be found on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, etc. The idea is that we are able to provide information on what we do and also educational information. For example, we're having these educational information on how your life you can be take you can take care of. We can talk about traditional complement and integrative medicine. We can talk about uh, what are the different things we can include in our treatments. Uh, we can also talk about what are the different plants that we can use. And we also communicate our different activities uh, around the country. So here to the left, you can see some of the pictures that we have from opening our different centers uh, through the country. We do have spaces in the coast near the sea. We have spaces in the in the mountains, we have spaces. Uh, this is we are in Cusco here. Uh, this is we are in the south. This is the north. Uh, we have spaces everywhere, and we did open all of them. We had to travel to make sure that we open all our centers. And here to the right is uh, my. It's, it's our beautiful team from um, the higher unit from where we belong to. This is this is the. Uh, different members of uh, the different other units that we are part of. And here you can see us uh, from our team. Uh, the one that you see over there, the first one is my boss and the rest of the people is the people who work with me. Uh, very beautiful people who actually dedicated themselves to make sure that we are able to offer these kind of services. So I wanted to thank you uh, for listening to this uh, little presentation. I wish we could have some questions and be able to communicate with you. Uh, we, um, we welcome all of you here in Peru and I wish we could actually uh, share even more of what we're doing. Uh, I would be more than happy to receive some questions from you. And uh, this is just a little bit of what we were uh, doing and I'm sure we will be able to do more and more sure that if we are all working together in all uh, the continent, you know, uh, even North America, South America, uh, we will be able to uh, put forward more information on how to use traditional complementary and integrative medicine. Thank you very much for the attention and uh, I hope to see you again.